Hey, brothers and sisters, Brother Patrick coming to you live from uh, the Philippines, Mindanao Island. Hope you guys are doing all right. Um, I myself, I've been so excited to make this video all day, but I'm so busy with the ministry work here, and then I have to keep waiting and waiting and waiting to where I can make come and pray and then uh, try to make a video. And so I did this. Uh, I'm going to have to pray some more because I cut my prayer short. So I can make this video, brothers and sisters. I'm so excited to tell you about it. Okay, I want to say this. Mid-May, I'm going back to the States. And I wasn't sure exactly where I was going to live, but just like yesterday or the day before, the Lord spoke to me where He wanted me to stay. Okay, my wife has to spend at least six months out of the year in the States until she finishes her citizenship, you know, uh, or she will be delayed. If you don't spend at least six months... You know, you can keep your green card if you enter the United States once a year. But for citizenship purposes, you have to spend at least six months a year in the States every year uh, until you get your citizenship for like, you know, whatever. It's a three-year window. You have to meet that requirement. So anyhow, my plan is, just to tell you this, and the time frame about what the Lord showed me, okay, is I'm planning on being in the States until at least the beginning of November. But, you know, my actual time frame is mid-November to mid-December to come back here for three or four more months and start on orphanage number four and then fill out orphanage number three. Orphanage number three, we're going to put like at half capacity because I'm training the house parents there with the new orphanage we made. I ask you guys to pray about all these things I'm mentioning, please. Barring the Lord's return, this is my plan. Uh, that orphanage number three will be at half capacity until we see how they do. If the par house parents still want to continue, we'll go ahead and max it out. Excuse me, because every kid, when the more kids, it's, you talk about confusion and and, and and you know and all that. Every kid you add is just a whole other level of you know. It's a lot of responsibility and it's a lot of to keep up with and everything. And it's and it's a calling to do it <laughs> to deal with all those kids. Uh, you know, and so there are people that are called, and, and we'll see. And by the grace of God, they'll be able to handle it, and then we'll increase. Anyway, so that's November, and we'll start on orphanage number four. So the time frame of my dream was in this season between mid-May and, let's say, mid-November, just, just in this year, this year of 2015. Uh, uh, anyhow, I wanted to put that out there. You know, there's people that flip around looking for dreams, and they're just like, boom, I just want to hear the dream, man. I just want to hear the dream. Well, you know, those are the very people it's going to be left behind. They have no fruit of the Spirit. Like one of the fruits of the Spirit from Galatians 5.22 and 23 is temperance or self-control and patience and all these kind of things. So, you know, so the immaturity, you know, that people display, that's why when I see that, I was like, this is the, you're the very, I tell those people, you're the very one that needs to slow down and listen to the video. Lots of the mature Christians, they don't need to hear the details. But the immature Christians, the very ones who need to hear the details, don't want to hear it. <laughs> That's what's so silly. Uh, the paradox of it, brothers and sisters. Um, anyhow, so I ask your prayers for all these things, you know, because any word that somebody gives is not the Bible. You know, the Bible is the highest standard, and if we give a word, you know, we see through a glass darkly. So I'm sharing what the Lord is sharing with me, and I'll continue to do that as long as the Lord leads me, so I will. And it's through a glass darkly. So, and but the Lord says in Amos that he doesn't do anything without revealing it first to his sons, the prophets. You know, and so um, there's two different times the Lord has shown me through dreams that the, that the tribulation would be 2015. Now we talk about not knowing the day or the hour, we're talking about the rapture. The signs in the Bible, as Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, what is that? The signs of his... The second coming, the return at the end of the tribulation. All the signs point to the second coming of Christ at the end of the seven years. Not to the rapture, not even to the tribulation. The tribulation points to the return of the Lord. So him coming as a thief in the night is before that happens. So I want to put that theology out there. I have to do that because there's so many false doctrines on YouTube. And I'm telling you, people worried about... Even myself, we want the Lord to return. We, we want the rapture to happen. We want the, Lord, the tribulation to begin for the Lord to return. We don't want tribulation for anybody. We don't see anybody get their head cut off. We don't see anybody go to hell. But we want to get it on so it'll be over with. You know, this process we call the tribulation, the Bible calls that, is actually 
the, tri the creation in travail for the sons of God to be revealed for the restoration of like in the Garden of Eden. The world will go back to the way it was before the fall of Adam and Eve, before the curse, before the Lord cursed the land, and before the Lord cursed Adam and Eve, and before all of those things happen, that's what we're going back to. That's what the world will go back to, the thousand-year reign of Christ. And so that's a process. And that's what we want. We want that being able to walk with God in the cool of the day. That's what we want. And unfortunately, the process that God has set up is people need to be redeemed because they're lost and without hope in this world, brothers and sisters. And that's what it's all about. The most important thing for the Lord, to, for people to know is, is get ready. You know, it's not even that it's one year from now or two months from now or ten years from now, but people need to always watch and pray always and be kind of worthy to escape these things that are coming upon the earth. Jesus said, Luke 21, verse 36. So, you know, brothers and sisters, I have to call it like I see it and say what the Lord leads me to say. So, in my dream, the Lord spoke to me two days ago where to live during this season. The name of the town, where to live. Two days ago, the Lord told me. So I said, okay. Now, in my dream, I was in that town. And I was at like a restaurant, and they were having a wine tasting, okay? And there was a group of us at a table with a white tablecloth, and there was a group of people, and I'm, and I'm going to give the interpretation as I go. There were people that were not totally walking with the Lord 100%, but they were Christians. They were a little bit lukewarm there. They were at the table, and they wanted to drink the wine. They were all excited to drink the wine. And then me, I was thinking about drinking the wine because, you know, these other Christians are going to drink it. I said, I might drink the wine, too. And then listen to this, and this sister, she's, but I, she says she watches all my videos, so the sister's name is Mary, and she's from South Carolina. My friend named Mary from South Carolina, you know who you are, and uh, sister uh, Mary, uh, she was there at the table with me, and she was all the way on the other end of the table. Uh, all even off by herself. And then I was like in the head of the table. Well, it was a round table. I was by myself. And then these other people on the other end of an, an oval-shaped table. And so now I know the interpretation was is, is that my friend, Sister Mary, has a crazy faith. <laughs> and she does. She has crazy faith. As I've even made a video, and I mentioned those who watch my videos, you know when I was in South Carolina... Two different people, including myself, got a word of knowledge that it was time. Her brother was sick with leukemia. And he's in his 50s. And they'd done about all the chemo he could do. And then they had to get in remission so he could get a bone marrow transplant, you know. And it looked like it wasn't going well. And the Lord had given me a, a definite word of knowledge that the Lord's will was for him to go home, to go to, to, to die and leave this earth. And she had another friend who also hears from the Lord who told her the same thing. So it was two witnesses. But my friend, Sister Mary, in her crazy faith, which is what we should all have, right? She believed, and her prayer was, that my brother will live to see the rapture. I want my brother to be here to see the rapture. That was her prayer request. Let my brother live long enough for the rapture. You know, I don't want him to die when he could, you know, what I believe the rapture is any time in his lifetime. You know, and even now, any day, any week, any month now, and I want him to be here. That was her prayer request. So I said, okay, Sister because of your crazy faith, your uh, extreme faith, I'm going to believe with you because, you know, I have extreme faith. But when you get around other Christians that are just like, well, you know, you know it, it, it has an effect on you. So, you know, you, you, know you, you try to work with people. And so when you have someone in extreme faith, they're pulling you that way. Just like a lot of you guys who watch my videos. You know, the result is, is it's, it's uh, invoking you and provoking you to have greater faith a greater relationship with the Lord and all that. You know, we, we'd be salt and light to each other also. You know, the, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So, anyway, in my dream, and this is interpretation of it, Sister Mary was there on the end, and she was uh, she was all um, adamant she wasn't going to drink with the wine. She was all adamant that she was in, uh, in uh, sanctification and all this, and she wasn't going to drink wine until she drank it with the Lord in heaven, which is awesome, right? And true. And I was, and you know, when she said that, I was like, yeah, absolutely, you're right, 100%. That's what we need to do. And so, the next part of the dream, there was a girl who had died. A girl who had died. A young woman who had died. Now, they brought this young woman into the room. And they laid her on the table in front of all of us. 
And that group of people on the right side kept saying, she's dead, you know. And then, as a matter of fact, well, Sister Mary is in the medical profession, you know. And so they were asking her, you know, D you know, this woman's dead, this woman's dead. And then Sister Mary, in her crazy faith, she said to me, let's pray for this girl to be resurrected. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Because <laughs> I'm right in there, you know. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so we laid her on the floor, and we began to pray, brothers and sisters, and we laid hands on her, and all the other people were praying, but they were standing back and praying, and, and myself and Sister Mary was laying hands on her and commanding her, you know, and then I, I let me take that back. You know, I, I was doing the commanding, you know, the Lord was using me to command her to be resurrected. Sister Mary is the one who uh, provoked me to step in, to act in faith. You know, so we all have our different parts. That's a whole other message, but, you know, we work as a team. The other people were intercessing. And then she was provoking me, and then she was praying with me, right alongside with me, and then the Lord was using me to speak this, you know, I command your spirit to come back into your body and all this stuff. You know, and so it's a team effort, brothers and sisters. It's a team effort. Just like everything we do in the Lord. No man is an island. No woman is, you know, an island unto themselves. And so... The girl was resurrected, brothers and sisters. I mean, she looked horrible. And the, the girl represented, in this case, not only the, the pastoral lesson I'm giving you, but in this specific case, the girl was the church. The girl was the bride. Now, she was resurrected, and she had all of this. I mean, she was like green. She had like, uh, like she had been dead and, and decayed. Let's put that. It was disgusting. It was horrible. And uh, as a matter of fact... Now that I'm remembering part of the dream, Sister Mary said when they brought the woman in, when they were bringing the, woman, the girl in, the young woman in, like 20-something years old maybe, Sister Mary said, this woman is the first person to die from alcohol poisoning in this town in 50 years. And I, and I don't know what that means, exactly that part, but um, 50 years being like the Jubilee year and all that kind of stuff. So... Um, that's an important part because the Lord's reminding me of it, you know, so that 50 years means something. And so, uh, anyway, it's almost been 50 years since Israel took Jerusalem. You know, that's maybe next year. Anyway, so um, 2016 or 17. So, anyhow, we she became resurrected. This is a, the, the, the awesome part that people want to hear, but the whole thing is that all these meanings... And I believe this goes along with the dream that I had about the Lord turning four ways. This is a part of that. This is a continuation of that dream, that what the Lord's been trying to show me, brothers and sisters. So you just have to listen to me. And so she was resurrected. And then we began to, you know, say, all right. You know, we were celebrating, praising the Lord, you know, celebrate Jesus, you know. And we were jumping around and praising the Lord. And listen to this, brothers and sisters. Connecting to that dream I had where the Lord was turning like the four different blood moons, the four fat watches of the night and all that stuff. And I'm going to be on a radio show talking about that uh, at the end of the last uh, Sunday night in May. Anyway, so it suddenly became dark. <laughs> I'm just laughing because it was just like we were celebrating the resurrection of this young woman who I found out later from the interpretation from the Lord was the church, the bride. And there was this became black, black night. And then there was a mighty, mighty earthquake. I want you to listen to me. There was a mighty earthquake. Now, sometimes it's a spiritual meaning or a natural meaning. I don't know. But it became dark, brothers and sisters. I mean, just like the storm clouds came in. You know, it was like when Jesus died on the cross, it became dark, just like boom. And you could, you know, it was like storm clouds and all that stuff. And there was a mighty, mighty earthquake, just like when the Lord gave up the ghost on the cross. But this was everywhere and we were all knocked to the ground brothers and sisters all of us there uh were knocked to the ground and we were afraid and then listen to this now the lord himself appeared in a vision to everybody he was there but he was there as a vision i'll put it that way you know it's not like uh what some of these uh wacky uh people that don't believe in the rapture talking about holograms but it was like the Obi-Wan Kenobi thing, you know, because I know Brother Gary loves to use Star Trek references, uh, Star Wars references and Star Trek references. It looked like that hologram from R2-D2 with, a, you know, with a, the Princess Leia and all that, you know, something there or whatever. It was like a hologram looking thing. It was a vision of the Lord Jesus and it was him. It wasn't from the enemy to people that don't believe in the rapture that will come up with any 
thing to say it's not the rapture. This was the Lord like in a vision, in, in a spiritual body, spirit body. And he said, tell my people I am coming very, very, very soon, sooner than you think. Okay. And then the vision shifted. And then I was in a bedroom in the bed and it was nighttime and I was in my dad's house, my parents' house. The interpretation, I was in my father's house. And then that girl who was resurrected, she was in another bedroom. And in my dream, she was like my relative. You know, it was the bride. She was in another room asleep. And I was in this, a different room asleep. And I could look out and see the living room and stuff. And it was my parents' house. But in my dream, it was like, hey, I'm in my dad, my father's house, is what I was saying in my dream. And you know, I woke up and I was looking and looking. Oh, yeah, I'm in my father's house. And then the Lord's, the same voice from the Lord spoke to me again that had just spoke to all of us in that vision. And the Lord said, I'm coming very, very soon, even tonight. He said, even tonight. Now, lots of people say, it's, you know, would think, well, it could be literal. And then there's people who hate the rapture. Like I say, there's always people that don't believe in the rapture who love, or they're Judaizers or whatever, they don't agree with other doctrines, and they always try to look for something to try to call people a false prophet. Now, for me, the interpretation from the Lord that it's tonight is that night is coming, a.k.a. the tribulation is coming, the nighttime, like in my first part of that vision. Actually, you know, it was, that was all one scene with a wine table and then the, 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 the old girl being resurrected and then... Uh, the Lord appearing, that was all, this second scene was short in my father's house. I was in a bed, and it was night. And anyhow, the night time from that first vision where there was an earthquake and night time and all that, that is what the Lord was talking about tonight. You know, night is falling on the world. We know that. They're getting ready to shut everything down. You know, the euro is about to collapse. I mean, you're going to see the euro collapse and the dollar collapse immediately behind that. Now, I don't know how much the church is going to see, but you're going to see, let, let me, I, I need to just make a different video about this. Look, I mean, the, they're about to have martial law in the United States. In July, they are cutting the pensions in at least half of all these collective pension funds, like the Teamsters. They have over half a million retirees. Their pension fund is going to be cut in half in July. And then lots of other of these collective different kind of union people who are retired. Talking millions of people who are retirees are going to have their pensions cut in half. It's only the beginning. They're going to try to raid people's 401ks and all that stuff. Just like they've been doing in Greece. Go see what they've been doing in Greece. What they tried to do in Iceland and they rejected the man. The man's plan. The Illuminati's plan. All these countries. That's the same thing they're going to do in the United States. Look what they did in Nazi Germany. You know, registering guns and confiscating them. What they did in England in the last 20 years and, and other countries, Australia, all these countries, they had people register their guns and then they confiscated them. They're trying to do those same things in the States. But you've got, that's, that's a kind of a long-term thing, but you've got the collapse of the economy. You've got this Ebola. You've got what's going on in the Middle East right now, a showdown. You've got ISIS and a showdown now between Iran and, you know, the Shia Muslims versus the Sunni Muslims there about Yemen and all that stuff. All around where all those oil fields are. When you're talking oil over there, you've got the Chinese, the Russians, United States, all, you know, NATO and all that. They're all wanting to have a control of that oil, those oil fields. This is what God already knew was going to happen, brothers and sisters. All these things in the world are coming to a head. Wars and rumors of wars. North Korea. Iran, Afghanistan, whatever, Libya, all these countries in the world. It's just all, you know, even in America with this jade helm, it's wars and rumors of wars. We're almost out of here, brothers and sisters. The rapture is at hand. And I believe the Lord showed me because he wanted to encourage me. Because I've been thinking the last few days with all these things going on.